can be more deliberate than this. Society. And that is what I've come with this afternoon. There are at least seven people in this place. I'm seeing that same boy that I saw in my vision in 2014. That thing that takes people from the backside in their class and suddenly makes them number one. That thing that takes people where 10,000 naira is an achievement to the place where they are giving in millions and their account is not shaking. That's a moil of significance. Where your family members have even written you off. Say this one, what can come out from her? People have given up on you. I need a little volume. You, you have given up on yourself. The oil of significance is here. They said to your face, let us see what we become of your life. I've come to tell you what we become of your life. Lord, where are these seven people? Lift up your hands, everybody here. There are seven. Oil of significance. Help them as the power of God comes upon them. Look at me, everybody. When words like this are given, this is not the time to pray problem. This is the time to receive answer. The anointing is the answer. Mary asked that question, how shall these things be? You heard those testimonies. I, I, I wish I could have been here to hear them myself directly. There is something that comes on people. When your grade is 40, suddenly you are scoring 90. Your list is 90. It's something that comes upon a man. These people, some of my folks that are here with me, that travel down with me, they are comfortable millionaires. They are owners of business that are making profit in millions. So when I say something is coming on you, that's not the time to be singing or to be dancing or to be praying your problem. That's the time to say, Lord, I'm that person. Let this oil touch me. There's a posture of hunger. How will it be that a virgin Mary will be with a child? It's impossible. The angel answered and said, there's a way to happen. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Lift up those hands again. There are seven people that God is about to bring significant increase to their finances. There are seven people inside the same seven. 
academic excellence exploit in life don't be a spectator. Something is coming upon you now. Are you back? Hey, no, 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 Mantles are falling here. For your significance. For An angel called the angel of the basket. This angel carries the basket, it's called the never ceasing basket of abundance. That as far as you are spending money, it can never finish in your hand. Help them out. Money cannot finish in your hand. There are people that are in a tight financial situation. As I'm speaking, shame, debt, you are owing money here, yeah. owing money here, yeah. borrowing from loan app, begging this person for money. Ah, give me sound on this mic, please. Oh, I've been preaching for a long time already now. Zeke teke parata kabaya teke te. Zeke There are at least five of them marked out for stupendous prosperity. Five of them with a scream now. Let the power of God move from the front to the back. From the front, ah, uh -huh. help them. No more debt. No more shame. Ah. Bring them, just move them forward. I'm going to lay my hands on every one of them. Move on. I'm not doing guesswork. Bring that this way. There's somebody I'm seeing. Maybe you're the last born or at the tail end that you know second to last or something that's the can you all hear me i can't really hear myself can you hear me clearly my voice has gone small my preaching says i need as much volume as you can please um, sound help me let me be sounding like this even when i'm talking like this second to last born or last born Ah, I'm seeing something. I'm trying to arrange it well so that I can give it clearly. Oh, Rabba Katele de Beketia da Fakiata, Namantele de Bakoskiata. 
the, whether they told you or it's something that you have seen in a dream or somebody that told you physically or it has been something that has just been in your heart what I'm hearing is that you cannot make it that's what I'm hearing as if you have been told or you have been telling yourself that you cannot make it you will not be able to succeed in life where is that person? can you step forward? is, that, am I, is there a hand? somebody like that let me see your hands I'm not seeing the person is here. The person is here. It's whether you want to now identify yourself or not. God wants to do something in your life now. This is the last thing I'll do, and I'll, I will enter the river. I will enter God's world. Stand up. I've just seen somebody else like that. Somebody else, and I'm, I'll close that door if the person is not coming out. Genesis. Thank you. Let's celebrate this beautiful choir. Kai. I see I have one more teaching. Can I beg you with one beg? Is there something like one beg? I'm going to be in the manifestation of the spirit. He start miracle night. Healing, breakthrough, deliverance, anything you can think of that can happen to your life for good. As I started happening, evening session, we will crown it up in the fullness of power. So that's why we have condensed teaching. Let's drop the teaching. This one, you're having an encounter with the word. Next, we will see. Evening session, we'll be looking at encount encounters with the God of the supernatural. Encounters with the God of the supernatural. You don't miss that one. This encounter team, it is one of my core callings. It's one of my core gifting. To bring men into supernatural. You is, uh, let, let, I'll leave it for the evening. Let me just, that one I just gave his trailer. <laughs> men of encounters are men of exploits. Without an encounter, your life cannot count. For more on this, 4 p.m. This afternoon, a life of significance. Genesis chapter 12, quickly. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. This is God speaking a covenant with Abraham. And he says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. James chapter 4 and verse 10. Amplified classic. James 4.10 Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you. He will lift you up and make your life what and make your life significant a life of significance for prophetic breath Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22 
What do I mean by for prophetic breath? What changes the life of people is not Bible knowledge. What changes the lives of people is breath from the scripture. And one of the ways that the teaching is sound and holistic is that it has a seed form in Genesis, gene. So the gene for anything must be in Genesis. You must find something for the New Testament believer in the epistles. And then you will either find a prophetic aspect of that teaching amongst the prophets or the Psalms. Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 22. Let's read it together, everybody. One, two, ready, go. Some people are not talking. Are you tired? I'm the one that is sweaty. I'm the one that's been jumping since morning. If I'm not tired, you shouldn't be tired. You will read it again with your name. Personalize it loud and clear. Once you're ready, go. A startup business shall become a global brand. That is Isaiah 60 A struggling student shall suddenly become best graduating. You don't believe, or your name is not sounding well. He says, a small one will become a strong nation. Then a little will become a thousand. That mountain, you are a thousand times more. Yeah. Somebody says, ah, sir, a thousand times more. Uh -uh. Do you know? <laughs> one of the easiest things that can happen to a man is that when he encounters God, his life becomes significant. God has not ordained you for a useless life, oh. You are not a nobody. You are not God. Or he said to Abraham, I will bless you, I will make your name great. Amplify says, I will make you famous and distinguished. That means there's something that happens to a man when he comes into this covenant with God, his life suddenly makes sense. You see, God has ordained you for significance, his desire and intent for you is to make you great. To make you strong, to make you mighty, to make you a thousand times more. He wants to lift you up and make your life significant. You are, you are not destined for the lower levels of life. Let me show you something quickly. There are four levels of existence. <laughs> I used to wonder where I used to get all this my points from, but just follow me. The first way somebody can live life, number one, suffering. Right, it, right it. That's, that's number one level suffering. <laughs> Life is doing you bashu bashu. Everything suffering slash struggling. Anyone you want to use suffering slash struggling. That is one level. And you came here, that is the level you are in. God is shooting you to the highest level. Yeah. You know, so, some students, their whole life is struggle. TDB upon TDB upon TDB, and yet the score is not looking like it. Walking like an elephant, eating like an ant. Reading like you are, your head has become library, but your score is not looking like anything. It is lower levels. That person is suffering. You only have money to buy Gary to drink. You don't know when the next money will come. Or you'll be borrowing from one loan app to pay another loan app. See, oh, gone are the days where profession used to guarantee prosperity. There was a young doctor that just finished graduating from, you know, not from the University of Ibadan. And then he met my spiritual father. <laughs> when I hear his testimony, I'm always, I'm always, I, it will shake me. He said, as at that time, as a professional doctor, he said he will borrow money from one loan app to pay another one. That's how bad life was for him. And then the key to how to succeed in life was given to him. And my spiritual father looked at him and said, you know what? Start sowing your seeds. Start giving. Uh -uh. This guy is not even broke. He's broken. <laughs> you know when you can be under the bar, you can be at the bottom of the barrier. Some people are under the barrier. They are not even inside again. Their pockets, they, it's not empty. There's hole there. And he started. That was in September. By December, he got married. Marriage, he wanted to do since. But he couldn't do because of money. You are a young man. You just finished school. Why do you want to marry now? It's poverty that is talking you. The thing that's to make people marry at 30 is poverty. He sees that his body has been born in him. He wants to marry since. 
They say, but you know, you have to work for some years. You know, settle down. That settle down is a function of mind. It's poverty. You have to first settle down and you just be able to get, at least just be able to. Who said that? Ah, uh-uh. Students are living in flats in estates. What are you waiting for until you are married? Students. That's what I've come to drop here. <laughs> My God. He started giving. Got married in December. January. He brought his first half a million. Sir, I want to sow my first half a million in seed. February, he came. He sold his first one million. March, he bought some plots of land. April, he moved into a foolish, fully furnished three bedroom flat in one of the most, one of the very good estates in Ibadan. June, bought car. Just like that, yes. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it will do you like film trick. The kind of miracles that are about to happen in your life here will shock you. Just like that. In fact, easier than that. It's God turning things around. When, the, uh, when God moves, sometimes He moves suddenly. You'll be shocked that uh, in six months, somebody can go from debt to abundance. What is he doing that is bringing this money? He's doing online coaching class. You know, I need to like to settle down on everybody. He's not practicing medicine. He's doing online coaching class. He's teaching them how to write I L E L T. What is that exam? That's what that is coaching is doing. He has students in over 43 countries. Paying in, 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 in good dollars. It's not hard. Number one level of existence is what? Suffering. Number two, surviving. That one, you all know bad, bad, bad. Like someone, you know, Nigeria is used to do competition for suffering. Say, guy, why check on this thing? I don't get any money. Ah, you want to see better? You don't get leg to trek. Me, I know. <laughs> you see how people be doing competition on who is suffering the most. <laughs> Number two, surviving. That one, you are just there. Nothing major is happening in your life. At least you are having 50. What is the pass mark here? You are just there, borderline. In the book, they are doing receipts. Money, not receipts. I'm not repeating. But I just go, you know, those are push, let my people go. Just, yeah, just try to let them be going. And you just be coasting through life. You are not broke either. You are not owing anybody money. But if you want to buy something, 20K, you have to price it to 19 because you don't have to 20K. But you have 19K. Say, go buy 19. You understand? You'll be dragging. I just dare. Life is more than that. Number three level succeeding. Now you are doing well. You are achieving personal success. The things you want, that's the level of success. The things you want are there. You are, okay, I'm doing fine. I'm, I may not be the best in my class, but 70, 80, I'm an A student. I have one distinction somewhere too. We are fine. You know, I need to have money now. I'm using an iPhone. I bought it with my own money. I'm doing fine and all that. And your success is, success has a very wide bandwidth. Different people have different perspectives to success and different ideologies but don't go and collect your idea of success from the world though it must come from god's word then after success success you are blessed then the fourth level is the level of significance that one you are making other people to succeed that one you are not only blessed you are you are a dispenser of good to other people that's where god wants to take us to this afternoon that level of significance where you can make people's life better because they came in contact with you. When now you can say, take, this is capital, go and start up your own business. When now you can, you can be doing projects for your family, that family house that have not completed since 2001. You return and just throw one money there and say, daddy, let's complete that house. That is significance. Where you are now a blessing to others. God is not just about just giving you what you want. He wants to make you a source of blessing to other people. You cannot set to the level of God, just do my own. No, God, prosper me to the point where I'm a blessing to other people. Sometimes when we teach prosperity, somebody said to me, Pastor, why do you like to tell people to prosper? 
I said, should I suffer? Why are you always preaching prosperity? Should I preach poverty? Okay, all of you, God wants you to be poor. After today's meeting, you'll be poor. Is that what you want to hear? Don't you want to prosper? God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be comfortable enough in life to be able to make other people comfortable. God's greatest aim is not to make you comfortable. His greatest aim is to comfort you so that you can start pursuing purpose. Because see, there are many problems in people's life that if it's not solved, they can never fulfill purpose. God must deal with the personal problems you have so that you can have time and energy and space to pursue his purposes. How many people would think of being a blessing to many other people around them when they are hungry? Have you seen a hungry man feeding others? So I want, to, I want to take an initiative, feed the hungry initiative you. <laughs> you wanted to have six packs, now you don't have any pack. Everything has, it did not come out like this, it went in like this. No now. But that when you prosper to a particular point, when you are succeeding to a particular point, you rise to the pinnacle, then you are in a place where the success you are experiencing cannot flow to others. Because if believers don't rise to the top in life, that's why you keep complaining. Nigeria is like this. Nigeria is that. Listen, the hope of this country is never with the government. It's with you. Until you rise up to positions of influence, until you rise up to places of power, the person that enter power does not need mean they can change anything. Do you know what they, what they grew up believing? Because the problem in Nigeria is not the government. The problem in Nigeria is the family. The family is the smallest unit of any society. That means every problem in the society is just magnified on is what is in the family that has been magnified in the sight of the whole nation. You are the answer to this nation's problem. So you must pursue significance. God wants you to desire it and go for it. Significance is a measure of the value you are to others. Significance is a measure of the value that you add to others. You know, the word significance comes from the word sign. The first four letters in significance is what? Sign. That means to be significant means to be a sign that points others to the goodness of God. To be significant means that you are a sign that is pointing that your life is attracting people to God. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 26. It says, and God will lift you up as a sign to the nations from afar. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16, you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. God is depending on you. There is a seed of greatness inside you. There is a seed of significance inside every believer. There is a desire. It's just that many people, this desire has either been killed, buried, aborted, or corrupted. Some people were, ah, when you were young, ask a child what he wants to be. He will call outrageous things. I want to be an aeronautic engineer. I want to be a pilot. I want to, why? Because everybody has a desire to be on top. But soon I tell you, oh, say, marine engineer, I need bring money. I better go and study law. Uh -huh. Then they begin to kill your dreams. You are talking high and lofty things. Ah, one day I'll be this. I, you know, I heard the story of John F. Kennedy, I think. He met Abraham Lincoln. When they are school, you know Abraham Lincoln? When he's school, as a, maybe a 10 year old boy, his school went to excursion in the White House. And then he shook hands with the president and said to the president, one day I'll be the president of this country. Like Joseph, many of you had dreams. Other people, sometimes your family members, they'll be the ones to tell you, ah, ah, in Nigeria, oh boy, if I just get job, oh. This one you're talking about, I want to build this, I want to do, just if I get job, oh. Now, all your dreams of doing something significant, you threw it away just so that you can settle and get a job. Life is more than getting a job now. It's job hard to get. They came and, you know, they, so, so some people, their dreams will be killed like that. They'll just say, like, oh boy, see, let's just go to school. I thought I thought I ain't bad pass. So. Then they start coming up with different maxims. Bite more than you can chew. Don't bite more than you can chew. Cut your coat according to your size. Do you know my size? <laughs> Do you know whether I'm actually cutting it according to my size? They begin to tell you this. Money does not grow on three. Oh. <laughs> Question. Then why do bank have branches? <laughs> then you just give up. Say, 
Some people, their dream, this desire for significance was corrupted by movies. Significance is not the same thing as celebrity lifestyle. So for many people, they now had a twatted image. They now want to be like bling bling. Homer Jeep. You know, spray, spraying dollars. Where are they seeing it from? Music video. That now becomes a definition of success. I wonder about you because see how she's coming down from the limousine. See how they're snapping now. Paparazzi, is that life? Camera, don't you have photo snap yourself? <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. But you now people now corrupt it. There is of you to pursue how to bless lives. You are now pursuing how to make yourself known. So you will not be snapping inside a borrowed bathroom. You stand in front of the mirror. <laughs> borrowed bathroom. <laughs> Some people borrowed car. <laughs> I've seen things in this life. Oh. Do you know Pane Pasipo? So if you are not in charge, somebody else is in charge that is not of God. I want to be the president of Nigeria. Ah, there's no, there's no politician that is not that is clean, no. So I wanted to be a lawyer when I was in primary school, and I told me that no lawyer can make it to heaven. So lawyers, all lawyers, up and become Daniels in this generation. Yeah. Esthers are rising from here. Yeah. The borders are rising from here. Yeah. Don't let them kill it. Don't let the tradition of men stop you. Some people, what has killed their dreams and this aspiration for significance is life challenges. They push head like this, head hits them. They try like this, failure bash them. They try like this, people attack them. They say, I beg. Uh, you know that if you are going to be significant in life, people, they will criticize you. Have you Googled Benin or have you Googled Benin before? You just see exposed, false prophet. They will put one on his picture. Uh -uh. There is nobody that rises to the top that people will not say things about you. Nobody. Anything you like, do. Even the president of... There's no president in... Oh. God help Nigerians. The problem with Nigerians many a times is colonial syndrome. Do you know colonial syndrome? If it is white, it is right. If it is black, it is at the back. That's colonial syndrome. Look at our president, use left president, did, 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 did this. Until one day I stumbled upon the comedy skit that them they did for their own president. And this God that is not only your own president, that is so Miss Yang. Every president has a video clip in his own country where he too said nonsense on air. But you, you carry on to extreme. I say, this one president has to rule us. But I'm on YouTube, let me not talk. <laughs> Are you getting the idea now? A life of significance is a successful life lived for the glory of God. Write this down. This, you must know, this is my definition and I tell my point. A life of significance is a successful life lived for the glory of God. Comma. The growth of the kingdom. Comma. And then the good of humanity. The glory of God. The growth of the kingdom. The good of humanity. If these three elements are not there, it's not a significant life. Did you, are you seeing it? That's a holistic, that means a successful life. You, you are fine. You are doing well. And then you are bringing glory to God. You are advancing his kingdom. And you are being a blessing to humanity. He told to Abraham, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. As a ministry, our prophecy, one of the portion of our prophecy for the year, this is a year of greatness. He says that great ideas, goods, products, and enterprises shall proceed out of us, blessing the families of the earth. That means there's something inside of you that God needs to pull out to help the world. But if you do not pursue significance, you will not get here. And there are five keys, quickly. How do you live a significant life? God will give me speed. Number one. Know your God. <laughs> know your God. Daniel 11.32 They that know their God shall be significant. A little one shall become strong. So how do you become strong? By knowing your God. They that know their God shall be strong 
and do exploit. That means you must have an intimate walk with God that is real. Not that is inside test tube. Some people that walk with God is inside test tube. <laughs> huh? Let me know. I can't explain that one. Know your God. Yes, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul at the climax, at the end of his ministry, 30 years in ministry, Bible scholars tell us he was still praying that I may know you. Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. That means there is something in this life of significance that starts with your walk with God. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. The first four words, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Tell with the first four words, in the beginning, God. That is what we call the God first principle. Write it down. In the beginning of your life and anything you are doing, God. You want to build a business, God. You want to pursue a political career, God. You want to aspire for a public office, God. You want to own a company, God. You want to start a refinery, God. You want to start an NGO, God. You want to build a family, God. You want to succeed in school, Anything. So whatever you cannot put God inside, you cannot do. This is why believers, eh, but can a believer, can a believer, I don't know. Walk with God. When you know your God, you will know what you can do and what you cannot do. Another man, what God will permit for one person to do, he might not permit for another person. Your, your, pursuing your person, your destiny is person specific. It's customized for you. And only God can give you that blueprint. The problem with some people in this generation is that they want God to bless them without a commitment to God. Now man came to Elijah and he prayed for him and he was healed of leprosy. Then he told him that, ah, thank you, prophet Tokai. You know that I'm chief of army staff for the Syrian people. See you. Anywhere the king go, I'll follow him. Now as we are living here, the king is going to Dagon. He's going to bow down to Dagon. I have to follow him. But then, uh, prophet, I bet, hold this one, two million. Eh? You understand? I'll see you later. Walk up, carry your nonsense money and get out of here. That's what the prophet said. Carry your money and go. Because it is not God. I want to go and live life anyhow. Let me do Yahoo. I have money. Then the day you send your tithe to church, that's the day they will arrest you. Because you just reported yourself to God. Say, God, see me, I'm a criminal. They must arrest you. <laughs> He told him, You've, God has healed you. You want miracle, but you don't want commitment to God. It can't work. You cannot say, God, bless me, bless me. Then you can't live life any year. Say, carry your money and go. Then Gehazi, hmm, sharp guy. Say, look at your guy. What means this kind of opportunity? <laughs> Went to sideline. Leprosy touched him. But God healed him. He was not always with leprosy. That means there must be a commitment from you to God. After, you see, after God, has, after God has given you personal success, or why God is giving you, before God gives you water, you must be committed to God. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Be people that are totally sold out to God. Somebody say, I'm sold out to God. God is raising a generation of those that fear him, that will love him and be committed to him. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 20, it says, cleave unto God. Kill every desire for worldliness. You can't be behind secular music stars and say you want to dress like them. Exposing your body and say you want to be significant. Everything glorious is properly hidden. Your greatest loyalty in life must be to God. Be sold out completely to God. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 12. The Bible speaks of Joshua and Caleb and said that, ah, he said, I will wipe out all this generation of Israelites except save Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because they are wholly devoted to me. Or because they have wholly followed the Lord. That must be your attitude. Know God and serve him with everything that you have. David, a man after God's own heart. That's an, that is a typology of a significant man. It's not about being perfect. Oh. You might make mistakes. Everything might not work well. But the most important thing is that your heart is tender and soft towards God. When God says, guy, what you did is wrong. Like David, lie down there and start crying. Lie down there and talk to God. No. God, God, you understand. That's the difference between David and Saul. In fact, David committed more sin than Saul. But David's heart was to be great in life. Made them both, not made them so. 
He made them boast, but he didn't make them so. Their choices divided them. If you be significant in life, you must make a decision. You need to focus on what God has given to you. Under this own your destiny, let me say something that's very important. Embrace your uniqueness. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. He says, message translation, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. That you, let, let me continue. Where, where is that now? Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that work. Don't be too impressed with yourself, oh. Don't compare yourself with others. Next verse. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Can we read this last verse together now? Once you ready, go. So who is responsible for bringing out the best in you? You must take responsibility. Own your destiny. Don't leave it to chance. Life does not happen by chance. It happens by choice. You cannot be double-minded and succeed in life. Huh? Should I be in Nigeria? Oh, but now you can't want go. You know this jackpot syndrome. Everybody wants to travel out of the country. As a job in medical school like this, you write, is it plat bro now? A plat, you just, oh, but we don't write. Oh, but I don't come out. A green card has never guaranteed a green pasture. Going to the embassy does not remove the embargo. <laughs> An alligator in Nigeria does not become a chameleon in USA. Nigeria will do anywhere you go to. Say no, sir, I can't be. You know, in that place, oh, steady power supply, Wi Fi, internet connection, things are just good, things are just working, the system works. Eh. How come there are beggars beside the White House? Washington DC, the capital of America, the, the streets are filled with beggars. They will not show you now, but you have seen it on TV. Have you not seen it? I don't know homeless people in USA. Answer. How come the Wi-Fi did not give them house? <laughs> that it is UK does not mean it's okay. <laughs> no, I didn't come to give you rhymes, so I'm preaching. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Celebrate what you have here in Nigeria. I was listening to, uh, you know, a great man of God share a story of how that, you know, where he's working, the government parastata, some white men came. So they came to his house and, you know, his wife prepared fried rice, chicken, moi moi, zobo, and all those things for the white men. They ate. He said, see, they left Nigeria. There was nobody that they met. There was nobody that they met that they would not tell him, ah, you know, he gave us zobo. We ate my ma, mom, can, can we take some to us? You, you are there saying, how which I eat burger. Then they say, how which I eat moi moi. That means this thing, nothing is better than the other. It's just you. <laughs> you must embrace where you are. Oh. Yes, sir. Huh? You see, God self no try. Why, why would they give better to me in Nigeria? You don't see any country. If I come back to this world the second time, why well, lie, I will miss. <laughs> they ask somebody, ah. This one I traveling to UK. What will you miss? He said, ah, the only thing I'll miss is my flight back. <laughs> I've never seen anybody that hates the land is inside that will prosper there. Ah, this guy is now a multi prospering useless Leo. I don't know whether he's a Christian or not. I don't have the details. Look at him. This man that did the Roko TV. He was outside the country and was watching Nollywood. Me, I don't understand the relation he saw there. He was watching and be like, God, Nigerians can act movie. I need to get them right. Ah, Nigeria film that they will die in jeans. Their ghosts will appear in Agbada. <laughs> ah. But that's what I'm saying. You, know. you, you are seeing all the faults. Somebody else is seeing all the potential. And then suddenly, he has built a TV out of it and he's prospering. But you, you keep looking down at everything we are doing in Nigeria. Small thing, you just complain. Eh, why is the boss like this? Why, ah, see the lecture theater? Ah, ah. Complainers never make it in life. Do you know what it means to complain? To complain means complain. <laughs> Every time you are complaining, you are perpetuating pain in your life. Relax now, there's good in this life. If you be willing and obedient. No, not obedient, as in to obey God. We have to explain what obedience means in this generation now. 
if you be willing and obedient, I'm saying Isaiah 119, oh, you will eat the good of the land. That means every land has good. There's nobody that is prospering in Nigeria, mega, mega, that does not love Nigeria. There's no money, there's money, there's no money in Nigeria, there's no money in Nigeria. For how many years the richest man in Africa is in Nigeria and he's making his money from Nigeria? So where which money are you saying there's no money in Nigeria? Me, I, I will go and open my clinic in UK. I can't do anything in Nigeria. I'll go and open. Ah, ah. Once your mind is tailored that way, ah, I see that's my message for you today. Embrace where you are. Whether you have plans for another place, for another thing, you kind of use less courses. This I'm studying. I applied for mercy, they gave me human nutrition. Is that cause? Do I look like I'm lacking nutrition? You see them now. That person cannot succeed. I don't know about you, but how many of you have observed? I observed it when I was in 100 level. That any course or lecture I don't like is difficult to pass. Wait, no, if it happens, you wave your hand. That just shows you the principle that anything your emotions is against can never come in your direction. That, stop hating the government. You will never prosper under that government. Stop fighting with the country. You will never prosper in that place. There is good everywhere. That course that they gave you or you, whether they gave you the course or you gave yourself the course, embrace it and become the best in that place. Maybe God has put you in that course for a time such as this. This life that you are living is your life. Oh, live it well. Don't be one leg in, one leg out. I want to do business. I cannot cope with it. I cannot combine. I cannot multitask. I, I can't do medical school and do ministry. I can't do ministry and do business. I cannot. Who, did, who gave you all those definitions? If you stand up and say, I will do this and it will succeed, I will do this. See, life has a way of attending to the decisions of your heart. When you decide, you turn on the switch of heaven. Power will flow in your direction. But many people have not made up their mind. They are still dilly-dallying. Your decision is what turns on the switch of the power of God. God, this is what I want to do and I will succeed in it. Heaven will back you up. But let that man that is double-minded not think he will receive anything from God. Because you'll be tossed to and fro. Ah, this is the new thing that is raining. Eh, ah. Let me leave this one. Let me come here. What are you doing today? I'm selling pure water. Three months time, which, what are you doing? Ah, I'm into interior decor. We are now doing <laughs> We come back and meet you again. Ah, no, that interior decor did not really work. Now, what I'm doing is catching services. Then you're saying, God, what I'm doing is not prosperous. What are you doing? You said, you know what you're doing. <laughs> you see ministers like that too. What is the message that is raining now? Ah, breaking the course on the firstborn. You start. This, today's seminar is firstborn seminar. <laughs> we come back again. Wow, we have the first one program. Let's invite that man of God. He has changed. What is he doing now? Ah, but I saw that people that have the highest like on Instagram is relationship people have started. You know, now I'm not doing relationship seminar. That's what God. Ah, then want to invite you for a relationship. You come again. You have moved to wisdom keys. Now I'll give you 10 keys of wisdom. Ah, which one are you doing? Your heart must be steady. Make up your mind on what you want to do in life. See, this making up your mind also involves, don't use, there's, there, are, there are different kinds of laziness. In prayer, number one laziness in prayer is that one where you are too lazy to stand up and pray. You just be like, Ah, Kai, I know I should pray. I know I should pray, it's not prayer. Saying I will pray is different from praying. God, I will pray. I'll pray. You have not prayed, though. You only say you will pray. Nothing has happened. That's one laziness. The second kind of laziness. Is the laziness to come out of prayer and go and do something? Lay break it fire. Lord, my business is prospering. Shade, Lord, break it. My business is prospering. Go and say, Lord, I put on Insta, I put you on status. La, break it. My business is prospering. Who will buy from your status? You, I mean, have you bought from somebody's status before? You better carry your goods shamelessly on your hand and hit the streets. Change it for sale. Ah, ah, sir, me. Medical student, be doing teaching for say, is is the devil. He has associated shame with marketing. They told you they programmed that poverty inside you since you were in school. If you don't face your book, you end up a market woman. Now you think market women are failures. Meanwhile, they are any more than your father. So sorry, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. There are any more than the person that told you that. Hey, okay, with all due respect, sorry. <laughs> 
one of my mother-in-laws, when she opened her shop in one of the major markets in Ibadan, then first day, almost a million profit. Ah! I said, Jesus, what should I go leave school? Go they save a market like this. Profit, I'm telling you. But you, you put it on your status before me class there. Your status, they'll be like, okay, now I put after one month, nobody patronize you. Now put status, buy from your game. Now I'm begging you, self. You want me to be hungry? Now me give you business, beggar, executive beggar. Be doing online begging. Come and buy from me now. Why should I buy from you? One of my young ladies was started selling perfume oil. When she was, I don't know what level she was that time now. So maybe like last year or two years ago. She started selling perfume oil. In two months, she was making profit in, profit in hundreds of thousands from selling perfume oil. That one is 500, two, 1,000. I look at it. I saw this one you are posting. Don't post any useless perfume oil on your status. Status does not use perfume. Go and meet human being. She packed the whole bag, went out. See, she sold everything. You, you are sitting down there and be saying they will come and buy. They will come. Have they come? <laughs> own your destiny yes. what will be will not be what, we, what you decide for to happen is what will happen own your destiny say I know God will come through for me <laughs> stand up and move he will meet you on the way another thing that crippled people inside this own your destiny is ah, I don't know what God wants me to do I need to know what God wants me to do Father, show me what to do. Show me what to do. Guys, stand up. Let's go. Ah, no, I've not heard from God. Where I should stand up? Ah, uh ah. -uh. There is one thing that righteousness, consciousness will cure. It is that lack of initiative. Many believers don't have to make, take spiritual initiative. They are waiting for God to dictate everything to them. God does not talk that often. Holy Ghost, should I wear the blue shirt or the white shirt this morning? You will soon run mad now. It will bring you to a psychiatric world. Because you start hearing voices. What concern Holy Ghost concern shirt? <laughs> now, can he tell you what to wear? Why not? But will it be the day what you wear every day? You will sit down. I'm hungry. Holy Ghost, beans, rice, dodo. Which one? When you are hungry, you can cook. The hunger can never get. Wait. <laughs> that is the same thing people are doing with their life. I don't know if God wants me to really. Maybe this message. I don't know whether it's not. Maybe it's not God's will for me. That's why I'm failing. Because I know this door. I, if I, I know that, maybe it's not my thing. It's not your thing. Exactly chapter 9 and verse 10. Whatsoever your hand finds doing. It didn't say whatever God gives you. It didn't say whatever you find. Whatever your hand finds doing, do it with everything you've got. I did not choose the cause. The cause shows you. Do it with everything you got. That's how life is so. Whatever you, whatever you are doing, give your best. Don't sit down there and say, I'm looking for purpose. Listen, I said it in the morning, you know, most of you are already in your purpose. You're already doing what God wants you to do. Look at Saul. Saul was not even yet a Christian. And he had an encounter on the way to Damascus. And Jesus said to him, it is difficult for you to kick against the pricks. Do you know what that means? It is hard for you to go against divine destiny. He did not hear God, but he was already on the path. God will sideline you. Eleazar, the son of the servant of Abraham said, I been in the way. The Lord led me. Say that. Say, I've been in the way. I've been in the, way. the Lord. Yes. That means many at times the leadings of God is waiting for you to take the first step. Until you move, you will not hear God. Abraham, leave your father's house and go where? I'm not telling you. Start moving. Until you start moving, you will not know where you are going to. So this one, I got here sitting. I don't know what God wants me to do after school. What next? Eh? Finish school first and start doing something. Because that's how you sit down there and become paralyzed. Over analysis always leads to paralysis. You want to, uh, um, what are the odds? What are the pros and the cons? Every time you are checking, what are you checking? See, there's what, and even if you have made mistake, have you been driving with GPS before? When you miss your turning, do you suddenly hear the voice of the woman in GPS? Where <laughs> you don't miss road again, Abby. Sorry, I'm a pastor. <laughs> Is that what the human is that what the GPS will say? So then you see recalculating. Then they will give you a new route that will still get you back to the same destination. Don't be too afraid. Even if you miss God, He will recalculate your step and still bring you back to what He wanted you to do with your life. 
you are not, no matter how stubborn you are, if you are a child of God and you are sincere, you can never miss the will of God. Never. He will usher your steps. The Bible says in Psalms that the conscious and unconscious step, Amplify says, of the righteous are ordered of God. These steps of the righteous man are ordered. Sometimes you will not think about it, but what you are doing is what God wants you to do. Own your destiny. Kai. God is realigning people's destiny. You. Number three. Grow yourself. Number one, know your God. Number two, own your destiny. Number three, grow yourself. There is something about skillfulness that is required in greatness. There is a gold mine. There is the seed of greatness in every believer. God has never made a failure. Failures are self-made. <laughs> Failures. They decided to fail. So it can't be. You don't know my story. I know it. Okay, I don't know it. But I know story that is similar to your own. <laughs> Success is in you. But it takes... You, have you ever seen gold on the road by chance? You were just walking. I just saw gold on the floor. See, ah, this is raw gold. Though. Ah, and it's on the floor. It's under. Because the things that are valuable like crude oil, you have to drill to bring them out. That is the same way greatness is inside every one of you. But you have to drill to pull it out. You cannot be living a superficial life and be significant. You have to go and bring out those things that are inside you. There are ideas inside of you. When you were young, you were saying you were doing, you were going to do this for women, you were going to do this for children, you were going to do this for this. Now, life has hit you, you have matured. They say, oh boy, grow up, oh, wake up. Oh. <laughs> that one, a fantasy, wake up. Oh. Now, you too, you have woken up. <laughs> and then you say, oh boy, all that matters now. May man just get money to keep body and soul together. There, there are ideas inside of you that you must bring out. Yemio, multinational companies inside you. It will never look like it until you believe in it. What, what was the guarantee? What was looking like Joseph was going to be a prime minister in his life? You are reading Bible. You, you, when you read Bible, you just think it's Bible story. You don't know those people, those were real human beings. That, that was, that's how your life is. You are inside pit today. And you are just looking. Ah. Is it me that everybody was bowing to? I'm inside pit. Now they're looking down on me. You go to Potiphar's house. You try again, slave. Oh. They sold, they, you know they sold Joseph? Stark naked. Oh. Ah, they, they were buying Joseph as if he was a commodity. You are useless guy, man. You don't get bicep. Because they were looking for people that come and do work. That's what they were selling them in those days. Oh. No human right anywhere. You see a small right. <laughs> <laughs> his life was not looking like he sold with nothing he entered Egypt not even with cloth on his back and yet he rose to become a prime minister is your own that bad in another man's country you, you are in your own father's land though. but you have, to, you have refused to believe that you, something good can come out of you all those your dreams you have thrown them away can anything good come out of Nazareth yes Jesus came from there that is the same way you have asked yourself, can anything good come out of you? Yes, the salvation of nations is inside of, is inside of you. Nations are waiting for you. A generation can suffer and be lost if you don't stand up. If Joseph has slept with Potiphar's wife, that's another, okay, has slept with Potiphar's wife, they wouldn't have caught him. All. Ah, chances they would have caught him is, is, is very slim. Because the, the, the Bible says that even Potiphar did not know anything that was happening in his house except the food that was in his front. So the chances that he would have caught Joseph is slim. But guess what? Joseph would have been there for his fleeting, ple um, fleeting moment of pleasure. How is the English now? He would have just been there not knowing that a famine is coming seven years' time. And only somebody like Joseph can save Egypt, save Jacob, his father, and save the coming of Jesus. All those things, he never knew it was in view. That is how it is, though. You will just think that the decision you want to make today is only today. You don't know all the things that are in view. You don't know all the lies that are connected to you. That one choice you make will peg you at a level in purpose. And you will never rise to enter the palace where you will be able to save Egypt when famine comes. This was what God told me many years ago. And he told me, say, put your two hands like this. Purpose. 
pleasure. He said, choose wisely. A generation is dependent on you. So maybe you should do the same thing. Lift up your two hands like this. Purpose. Pleasure. Pain. Gain. Choose wisely. And Moses, Hebrews 11, 27, forsaking the pleasures of Egypt, he refused to be called the daughter of Pharaoh. I'll be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He denied everything. Why? For the Messiah. The Hebrews believe that. Give me that scripture. Let me show you now. Ah, boy. Give me the verse before it. By faith. So I say by faith. <laughs> when, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Next verse. Choosing rather to do what? <laughs> ah! Choosing rather to do what? <laughs> With the people of than to do what? Next verse. Esteeming the reproach of the Messiah. Now, Bible translators put Christ there. But what Moses was saying, the, uh, the, the um, Jewish rabbis believe that Moses is the greatest prophet in, his, his, in, in Israel. So what the, what the, how many Jewish rabbis interpret this verse is that he chose to suffer reproach for his... For, that is, ah, how do I put it? Moses was seeing himself as the Messiah. Do you understand? So he chose to suffer reproach so that he can rise as a savior. Bible says in Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 21, and saviors shall arise from Mount Zion. Saviors are rising from here. Yeah. But there's a decision that saviors make. They choose to endure hardship rather than to give in. Grow yourself. Daniel was found to be 10 times better. Daniel did not write an exam and write nonsense. Then go and pray. Say, oh, wow, you don't submit empty sheet to I beg. Show your boy mercy. Then the king now came out. I said, brilliant. Who is Daniel? Uh, give me one Hebrew name. What is Daniel's father's name? Check Daniel one. You might find it. I don't know. <laughs> Shall I call his son name Daniel Shola? No, it can't be me. <laughs> Okay, just give one Daniel a son. Who is Daniel? So, so, so. Ah, it's me, sir. My God, brilliant work. The first class student. What is Python? This is computer science 101. What is Python? Ah, oh God, big snake. God, no green. You are, ah, ah. You, no, you don't know what you are doing. You say God should be pushing you. Push you where? So that the day you enter and become prime minister, and they say, Oh, yeah, the problem has arrived. Joseph, what do we do? Ah. I know I attend economics class, so ah, <laughs> look at that now. Because students are trusting God to give them A in an exam they did not read for. Listen, you don't read to pass the exam, you read to know your craft. Let me try this out. This one that's left off for me. You don't read to pass the exam, you read to know your craft. He yes, said, but I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm speaking in tongues. See, see, if you know you want to practice medicine, read book. Oh. Don't go and forget scissors inside somebody's body. I have two surgeons. I want to perform a surgery on maybe one of your family members. It will not happen. No. Somebody you love. One is from another religion and paid attention in school. The other one was one so called prayo. Oh, this one is holding textbook to do surgery. This one is holding Bible. Who will you allow to operate on the person? So I got no worry. I don't remember everything about that surgery, but God did. Ah. God did. Where he did. <laughs> Be skillful in whatever you are doing. Be that surgeon that when you touch somebody's body, your touch is different. Not the one that was not paying attention in class. Say so was pray. If you know you want to pray, pray. My spiritual father said it. He said he did not pay attention in, in school. When they are doing word round, he will just bring out one small book. Can I take in? He will just fold. So when he finished medical school, JJ, when he was doing his house job, he did not know how to set line. I did not be like, ah, are you finished my music? I don't know. Just show me. When he finished, he could come out job the stethoscope like that. And go and carry the Bible that he was reading since. To be a full-time preacher. If he wants to go and do surgery, he has to go back, he has to reschool himself. Are you getting the idea? So if you know that ah, me, I didn't really pay attention in school, I know that his ministry that is burning in me. Don't go and practice so that it will not become my practice. You understand? Don't use somebody for experiments. If you want to practice medicine, put your eyes inside your workwear. 
you want to practice whatever you are doing be the best at it and God chose David because of the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hand Psalm 78 and verse 72 be skillful now you are doing a handbag you will so 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 you say you are doing tote bag when we look at the bag now we don't know whether it's square triangle or hexagon so which shape is this? Say your eye, your eye no straight. Look at the back. What's in the straight? Organa, your eye no. Ah uh ah. -uh. <laughs> you are head just like you make somebody say they have head there for one week. Then you say you're using healing hands. Which healing are you bringing? You just be chewing your mouth. Big head now. Stay one place. <laughs> be, be be exceptionally good at whatever you are doing. I'm a writer. I'm a public speaker. Men of God, go and learn English. But you know, other generals are older, they didn't go to school. It's the anointing. That's why you will be useless. Ch sorry, sorry, sorry. Charles Spurgeon said, God we blow through a ram's horn until he finds a silver trumpet. I'll tell you what it means. God we allow Peter to write a piece to until he finds Paul that is skillful. He never told. Peter, a common fisherman that you stand before kings. He told Paul that was learned, trained under Gamaliel, the best of the best, a Pharisee of Pharisee. When he went to Athens, did you see him? And one of your poets say, see how he was quoting. He was well read. He knew his stuff. You, you cannot quote Bible. Eh, eh, eh. Moses chapter one. Say, ah, uh ah. -uh. Say, no, it does not matter. The anointing will cover. You will not be blowing grammar on the altar. Somebody will shout there. You think it's anointing. Open your English. Oh. <laughs> they don't just want to loud them too much. <laughs> be good at whatever you are doing. Go and learn how to arrange your words. Make your brain sweat. Stretch your brain. Think. No. I can't figure it out. I leave it. Uh -uh. Don't be lazy. Some people are too mentally lazy. Any small thing that just gives them stress like this, ah, I'm not doing it again. I better leave it. You will never be great that way now. This spirit of excellence is not that God is to give you a by Himself. Is that you have God will give you the ability to stay with rock until water comes out of it. The ability to stay with difficult problems until you find answer. Look at Daniel now. He could not solve Nebuchadnezzar's problem. He entered prayer and fasting, looking for answer. Is that how you used to look for answer for your generation? You have observed the problem. Why is it that Nigerians are always like this? Why is it that this is always happening? Have you gone to look for answer to solve the nation's problem? Or you are just complaining? If I give all of you full, full scale sheets, write the problem of Nigeria. Ah, sir, extra paper, I better go. Give me extra paper, Osha. Nigeria. Submit. Give me all the problems of Nigeria. Thank you. Oh, yeah, take. Write the solution to Nigeria's problem. If you cannot write a solution, don't complain about the problem. You don't have a right to complain about a problem you are not willing to solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, this government self, what can you do to help them? Is it my job? Whose job? This has to rise. A willingness to solve problems. Grow yourself. Give yourself wholly to what you are doing. 1 Timothy 4.15 Give yourself wholly, then your profiting will appear to all. Say, but I'm trusting in the favor of God. Favor will produce opportunities. It is only skill that we profit from the opportunity. When you go to White House to present your business and you talk, won't there be a problem? You know, some people are doing certain things that they don't, they don't even know the technical terms for what they are doing. Medical students will know it now. They say, why are you answering questions like a market woman? There are, there are technical terms to use. They taught you, then you now come and say, the right side is paining in, the right side, and you say, yeah. that's how you are too. You, what you are doing, hairdressing, tailoring, this one, you don't know any technical term. You just be talking loose, like, ah, ah. You are supposed to know something about everything and know everything about something. Let me say it again. You are supposed to know something about everything. And then have that one thing that you know everything, if possible, about. 
I have ideas of different fields that have nothing to do with me. But the one I'm doing, ah, I give myself totally to it. Some people, they will finish school. Three years after school, they have not read one book. Meanwhile, I set the target to read 100 books every year. Spiritual books. So when he's talking, I'll be looking. Ah, how does he know this thing? I will, I'm reading. Try to read the Bible through. Last year, I read, read the Bible, finished from back to back. One month, I read the Bible through. The next month, I read it. You know, that's how I am. When it comes to food, you, they will not give this. Glutony me. You are a foodie. Foodie. What is that? Control your appetite. Flee youthful lust. Hormone is boiling in your body. Told yourself. Say, so I have a question. Relationship seminar. How far is too far? I will tell you. The beginning is too far. We are just kissing. Have you seen people kissing with their hands at their back before? That's a kiss. The hand will just you. There will be coordination. Then one thing will lead to another. Then another thing. Then another thing. How far is too far? The beginning. Don't start. Can a man put fire in his bosom and say you will not be burnt? Ah. Then immorality is, is a problem in his generation. No. Hold yourself, oh. And some of these things is coming from the things that people are watching. You cannot sit down and binge. Ben, ben, what is it? Binge watch now. Binge watch. I just open another thing. Binge watch movie. You will sit down three hours, four hours, season, series. Ah. And you think something useful will come out from that life? Is it morality now? But you know, I just like I, I just like the secular song because the beat. I'm not really listening to it, just the beat. Boom. You know, there's a way. I... Every sound sponsors a spirit. Write it down. Every. Every sound. There's no, there, there are no neutral music anywhere on the it doesn't exist. Every sound. The one that is, you can see his teeth brown from ego. You are listening to his song. Says so my G. Oh yeah, yo, bro, oh yo, go, doom. Ah. Uh. Then suddenly, I wonder why I'm struggling with loss. Do you know maybe with that person that sang that song has slept to it? The spirit that is sponsoring him has jumped on you now. Number four. Two. I want to warm up first. When you're on the track, you don't warm. Even if you live to 120 years, it's too short a time. For, do you know how many people you can reach? Why set you to bless 100 people when God has destined that you can bless a million people? But you are wasting time. It's of you to move. This thing, follow your path. Start with whatever you have. Start with what you have. Start. You know, if I really want to do this, I know this is what God will do. But capital. I, I spoke to that, my uncle. Nobody has sent me money. Oh boy. I've discovered in this my this my years that you don't need money to do things so ah who we'll put a rice and build Nehemiah 220 that's what I'm talking about you will start money will meet you on the way hear me money follows the righteousness of it wealth and riches shall be in his house his righteousness endures forever Psalm 112 verse 3 start now but who will invest in my business? Start. One of my young men started his business and he was just there, maybe with 30,000 or something. Then suddenly, somebody that has never spoken to him before called him from outside the country. I said, ah, and what, what do you mean? You know, it is easier to do big things than it is to do small things. Ah, if you want to do anything small, yeah, because of money, let's just do start small. Small minds, small businesses, small things you do, we attract small people. And small people cause big problems. <laughs> but when you do big things, you attract big minds. Do big things. Go to the studio. Find how much it is to release that album. Is it not just 300k? Is it not just 500k? Is that my money? That you idea, you'll be singing your bathroom every day. You know that it's time to enter studio. You are still doing bathroom singing. Everybody's voice. God told me in many years ago. He said, don't plan crusades with the money that is in your hands. Don't plan with your pocket. Plan with my pocket. Plan with God's pocket. Why are you planning with your bank account? How, how much do you have there? Ah, 2K, Jesus. <laughs> you will never be able to move in life. 
the reason why I'm prospering the way I'm prospering is that there are many times I stand up and do things that are humanly bigger than me. And then I put all the bills on God. Learn how to jump for the impossible. When you start with whatever you have, till you succeed. Follow your path. Stay there till you succeed. Don't be in the habit of dropping things because it's looking like it's not working. Stay there till you succeed. It might look tough. Be there. Be determined. Be too determined that you will succeed till you turn every failure to a success. Never give up because of a failure. Quitting is not an option. There's always a better way. Find it. Failure is not fatal. Success is not final. It is the courage to continue that counts. We stay churchy. I say it again. Failure is not fatal. Success is not final. So whether you fail or you succeed, stand up and continue. There's still more land to conquer. Hey, ha, okay, this one has succeeded. You know how to sit down. Ah, you continue. You keep pushing till you reach the highest peak. Number five and the last. Flow in God's power. Flow in God's power. That means at the end of the day, when all has been said and done, if the power of God does not come upon you and what you are doing, there is no hope of it amounting to anything. It is not the best footballers that are on Nigeria's national team. Because the race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. Neither is, it, neither is bread for professors. Or riches to men of understanding. Or favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. That means it is the favor of God that controls time and chance. That will put you in the right place at the right time before the right people. Then you will have the right experiences. It is God's power that will subdue opposite English in an office where people are eating charm to talk to somebody. Life does not answer to grammar. Life answers to power. Pharaoh will not let you go. He will not give you your right without a fight. You must stand up. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, thy enemies submitted themselves. You need power if you are going to do anything significant on earth by God. He says, by my God, I've run through troops. By my God, I've leaped over walls. You cannot conquer a city if God and the angels of God do not sink the wall of Jericho. Have you been blessed this afternoon? Rise up on your feet with a loud shout. power of God but we don't move everything to the evening let me allow you to go and rest some of you are looking sleepy if you leave me ah I've had sessions where I will teach people for nine hours straight to but I will not be going I don't to get tired sorry but you need to rest are you going to come back in the evening are you indifferent about me you are happy is it worth it Every message, did I waste your time in any message? No, sir. You will come back in the evening yes, sir. for Miracle Night, yes, sir. an impartation. Yes, sir. All these things that I'm carrying is available for the taking. We don't do superstarism. We spread everything that God has given to me. My assignment here is to drop it. And then in the evening, I'll share the prophetic vision that God gave me for OUTH. God bless you. Lift up your hands and give God thanks. again 4 p.m. if you want to sleep set alarm 10 alarms you get the idea don't miss it and don't come late by the time I come in here let me see you and listen to me oh. 